Hello everyone, this is GT Time. I'm your moderator, Kyle Bossman, and joining us as always is our uniquely talented and knowledgeable panel, including Brandon Jones. Hi everybody. Ian Hink. Hi. And Michael Damiani. They've taken the hobbits to Isengard. <laughs> I just wanted to say That's that. That's how he's going out. You know what, I, and like, that was my last, I gotta, I wanna read, let me redo Michael Damiani. No. And, in his last regular appearance, um, Michael Damiani! <laughs> but that, that sounded awesome. cooler in your head. It probably yeah. all peaked. The whole thing is probably... Yeah, peaked. you just destroyed the audio. Thanks. And like everyone listening doesn't even appreciate that. <laughs> That's for me. Honestly, well, thankfully that will never happen again. Actively That's how they dislike appreciate it. it. Yeah, the, I'm sure they do. I'm sure we, the, the five comments have you been are written already. Down trending right now. Yeah, we're trending down. <laughs> People are tuning out. I just wanted that. That was for me. I wanted that. Minute this in. Is, this is Damiani's last regular appearance. Uh, after today, he's going to Texas. Yep. Got to make it clear. Still with game trailers, everyone's just like, "Yeah, he's yeah, leaving because he's, he's sick fired of that place." Or quitting. Yeah. Yet. There's only been like. Two or three people who didn't get that part, but I think it's yeah. For anyone who's still confused about it, yeah, I'm not actually leaving game trailers. I'm just leaving California. California game trailers are, good. Are splitting up. California, California bad. bad. So, with, like, what makes you think you can do that? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of person just says, you know what, I'm still going to do this job, but I'm going to go live in Texas, and you can just pay me the same, and I'll just do my job over in Texas. <laughs> so, we make, so we make video game videos? Yeah. <laughs> yeah the more era. stuff I work on and stuff, the more I realize like I could get a lot more shit done if I could just like be focused. Yeah. Like I'm going to be honest, like here's a good like inside story. Back at Viacom, when we had the capture base, I always used Station 1 because it was the most like enclosed one. And like people might walk by, but like they never bothered me. And it was like really like focused. And I got like so much done there. Now here with like how our capture setup is, like it's like way too hard to go for long stretches without getting distracted. The best I could do was sitting at where Brad sits right now. I don't mm -hmm. think, I don't know if anyone's seen like on your sh like your skits and stuff, you, you've seen the cubicles, yeah. yeah. So one of those, like, I like, has like the lightning thing behind me, so people can't sneak up behind me, so it like blocks off the back. You'll so still people occasionally end up with a Huber breathing down. Your yeah, yeah, so like it, it was as, as close as I could come, <laughs> yeah. and then like I shared office with Bloodworth, so I couldn't like that. That didn't know it was always like isolated, so I never had like an isolated spot like I did over at Viacom. Yeah, and I was like, man, like this doesn't like work out too well. That that's just like one of the things, but the other thing is. Uh, like having to actually commute to work uh, sucked for for everyone. So not having to commute and so long, Ian. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Okay, we're still talking. No, uh, the commute was eating up so much of my time. So I was like, man, you know what? I am losing like two hours a day that I could be like doing other stuff. And by the time I get in the office, I'm like, I'm fed up with like the drive. I'm so like angry and stuff. I'm like, man, I'm not like in a good mood. I every start off every day not in a good mood when I get to work and stuff. So I was like, this kind of stinks. Going to Viacom, like, it wasn't too terrible because it was right off the highway that I get off. So it was like, oh, man, this like this is too too bad. Yeah. But now this, like, how far we are inland, for anyone who lives in Southern California knows Southern California geography, like, we are in the smack dab middle of, like, Hollywood, West L.A., like, area. And it's, like... Beverly Hills. Yeah, Beverly Hills, middle... I, even though there's lots of shit around here, to me it's, like, the middle of nowhere because there's, like, no highways that go to it. You have to like drive along side roads for like 20 minutes every it's just direction. The dumbest traffic. And of the yeah, dumbest and it's people. just weird to me. It's like, yeah. why is there so much like traffic here? Like, it's not even the highway. It's just side roads. Like, there's just too many people here. This is like ridiculous. Are you made your case? I don't understand you guys. You live in freaking Pasadena. Pasadena. You live in Valencia. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense. I bike here. Yeah. <laughs> like. So what is your but, address exactly? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, show but you. The cool thing about like a new place is I got an apartment that has like a, a work room essentially. Like it has like its own enclosure where I'm gonna set up like my desk and like the capture stuff. So I'm gonna have like my own little like mini production area. So you wake up, you're in Texas, you're waking up, you make a pot of coffee. Put on your makeup. You put up your makeup and then you walk into your work room. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you do? Crack a one. The what afternoon. is a one? What is a one? One o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. At the crack of one. We're gonna go to. Gonna, I want to make like more like routine daily stuff. 
So I think the first thing I'm going to do is go to like Gaff mm -hmm. and see if there's any like really big like topics of discussion or there whatever. There always is, yeah. And then I'm going to like, I want to make like a video immediately like reacting to one of those. Are you always honestly going to do that? Because that's a really good idea. I think so. If I can get a camera, like as long as the webcam looks good enough. Okay. All or right. I don't know, just do like a live stream discussion with people. The like, Daily Damiani? The yeah. Daily Damiani. Just something like that. Like, dispatch is Damiani Dispatch. Damiani Daily Dispatch. <laughs> yeah. It's something that be more more conversational. I feel like cool. plus like I don't have like more time to like I have like my games library right there, so I don't have to like like have my own personal games library now. So How, if I here's see my it. question: How are you going to facilitate the amount of footage that you always capture for every project? You're gonna have like your hard drive budget is going to be astronomical. Oh, I have like uh, I have one two terabyte. Uh, Passport. Okay, that that's I got. half a playthrough of Metal Gear Solid. And then I have <laughs> the two solid state drives that I'm getting for the for we use for the Aver Medias. Okay. So those are like what 128 gigabytes each. Okay, that's, so that's one cutscene. That has 256. <laughs> and then my computer has a internal one terabyte hard drive. And then I'll have my other PC that I'm just gonna use for storage. It has like four terabytes. On and you'll it. be sending it all over here too. Oh yeah, like we already like. For over for another inside thing, when we were doing the Captain Toad review, or when I was doing the Captain Toad review, it was over Thanksgiving. No, no one was in the office. I sent the footage over. I wanted to get it ready because it had to be cut by Monday. I uploaded it, so we did the remote thing and FTP. Yeah, so we have FTP. How long did that take? Uh, that not, was a lot of footage. Didn't take that long actually. Really? It took only a few hours. Huh. Okay, yeah. so that's it for tech talk. Yeah, uh, we should discuss what's <laughs> on the coffee table right now. What is that? Uh, if you're only listening to the <laughs> show right now, if you're still listening, what is that? Uh, we have a couple of striped socks right here. Oh, that coffee table. It's uh, like this. That's my water. That's like huge. Brandon Jones is amidst a, a sock renaissance. Uh, something's changed inside sock of him. Brandon, what are we looking at right here? I got uh, Christmas toe socks. <laughs> Red and green stripes. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, they're the kind that like snug. They're snugly fit around each individual toe. What, what mm. manner of creature is on there? What is that? Is that a reindeer? Uh, I got some reindeer, reindeer on the front there. But it's yeah. a reindeer wearing, wearing a sweater. Sweaters. Oh, my God! I didn't even know. What do you mean? That you all these socks know? were missing from my life. <laughs> I knew there was oh, something, man. Kyle. I didn't know what it was. And it turns <laughs> out it was you, socks. I can't Did you, you own came. these or buy these? Uh, I own these actually. So I just nice. whipped them out. The comments talking about your white socks are North Korea. And you are Sony, and you say, you know what? Fine, yeah. no, I'll wear white, I'll wear black socks. I'll wear, no, I'll no, wear no. these. Uh, the difference you is, in, the, the one. difference is, Sony's gonna be very sad this Christmas when they don't, you know, aren't making money off of this movie that they, you know, put all these resources in. Yeah. I mean, you know, I guess good press is, you know, just press alone by itself is good press. There's no such thing as bad press. Whereas I'm loving life in these socks. I'd I think, say I think it's been changed. Press. I think it's been changed for the better. Oh, yeah. That guy who played Kramer, his life was never the same. That's not good. Yeah. Um, Cosby, he's pretty screwed. <laughs> well, you see, and Huber have him. identical scratches on the right side of your neck. Yeah. That's weird. Like new scratches? <laughs> I don't know. They're like old, like right here. What's the deal? I don't know. We both played Evil Within. Maybe it's <laughs> yeah. like long-term PTSD We like Evil battled fans. the same demon. Yeah. Yep. He's got the same slash. Uh, I forgot to mention why Ian's here. Uh, Bloodworth huh? is on vacation already. Oh. Slacker Bloodworth. Slacker yeah. Bloodworth. It's taken off early. So if you have not watched the last GT time, that is the last GT time of that of that era, that crew. Of the original cast. Ironically, right at the end of the year. You know, right to just wrap up the whole... The whole season. I wouldn't call it irony. I'm not sure if that's irony. Yeah, yeah I throw that word. That's around like Alanis more set irony. <laughs> right. Although now, kind of <laughs> ironically, irony. they added the wrong definition of ironic to the dictionary because everyone kept using it wrong. That's uh -oh. irony. So that is legitimate irony. That, so now, like, <laughs> the idiots have won. Oh man. To say something really harsh. <laughs> uh, what I want to do with this week's episode and why it's been pretty casual up to this point, uh, we're just doing a year in review. 2014, a year in review. Urine review. Urine review, yeah. Like how it's tasted, how salty, that's gross. Oh you are. my god. I don't know why. I don't know why no, I did that. He said you um, are in review. I just called a bunch of people idiots, but you just admitted to drinking urine. So. Yeah. Uh, so this is, I just want to talk about the biggest stories of the year. This podcast started in, it's I think, March. Of 1998. Of 1998. <laughs> been around been a, good, a while. Been a yeah, good bunch a good of years. Run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sad to see blood not make it for this one. Uh, but... Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about this year because, all right, here's our first thing. This is like our first full year of next gen. 
Uh, the new consoles of the 8th gen launched pretty late into last year. And so oh, this yeah. was its first full year. And when, it, huh. when they did launch last year, it was kind of just like, well, we'll wait for the good games. We'll wait for the next gen still games. Still waiting. And that's basically, yeah, Ian, what I want to <laughs> talk about. Are we still waiting for next gen games? Uh, we've had about four. Well, I mean, how many games only came out on next gen? Uh, oh, man, I don't have a list. Because Destiny ain't. Uh, Evil Within didn't. Very Titanfall few. Infamous. Titanfall didn't. Infamous Second Son. Infamous Sunset, Second Son. Sunset Overdrive. Overdrive. Sunset Overdrive. Sunset, I mean, Sunset Overhyped. Yeah. Forza Whoa. was on both. Uh, Dark oh Souls gosh. 2 was, Dark Souls was old. Two was old. It was old gen. That old gen. Mario old Kart 8. Gen. Drive Super Club. Uh, Wii U does not count as Tropical Freeze. Gen. <laughs> Tropical Freeze. <laughs> Bayonetta Wii U 2. does not count as 8th gen. Right, because we're talking about these two consoles in their first year. Uh, first year and a half. Is Wii U 8th gen? Big yes. Yes, no, little Big Planet no, 3 came out on both. Yeah. yeah. So it's basically that. It's basically Drive Club, Infamous, Sunset Overdrive. I'm sure there are some sweet indie games I'm forgetting. Yeah. But large AAA console releases. That's basically it. PT. PT will count it. <laughs> was PT? PT was only in PS4, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Was Master yeah. Chief Collection on 360? Uh, it just Xbox? No, no, they're all. Just Xbox One. It's an HD re-release. That doesn't count. I don't count it. It doesn't count. The Last of Us remastered. I don't count no. it. I don't count that. No. So yeah, I mean, let's talk about. There like, are no next there gen. There are no next gen games. Did you play a next gen game this year? Anyone? Assassin's Creed Unity. Nice. Was that yeah, only this gen? Uh, yeah. Shadow of Mordor. Was that on old? Game doesn't. It yeah. just came out on old, and it's chunky and stinky. Right. I yeah, would say they Shadow. Were working on it simultaneously. I, but it was I a would argue company. Shadow of Mordor is a next gen game. It was a different company making the old version. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, yes, I'm, I'm supporting your argument because hey. the so that's, company that's made the that, one version, and then some other crap company made the crappy version. That's the first one. Any any games anyone was willing to call next gen is Shadow of Mordor. Holiday Advance Warfare. Didn't that come out on the older system? I thought that was only for current gen. I should have known these no, things. I, I didn't really pay that That'd be a gutsy long. move, I think. It'd be too gutsy. I don't believe it. All right. That would have been awesome. I feel like that would upset the I don't have internet crowd. <laughs> the, I, the I don't have internet cl- crowd doesn't love Call of Duty. They just love multiplayer, mostly. Oh, yeah, um, you're right. I think it is on the other platforms. Okay, so Brandon, why is Shadow Mordor next gen? Because, uh, to me, next gen... It was kind of like we didn't do graphics for this year's awards... We just kind of looked around the room and it was like, we just played a lot of games that looked good. I don't know, it's it's not, you know, I, I think that's a product of eras going from like, you know, 4x3 to 16.9, you know, going from like, you know, just getting to used to like building 3D environments to like actually having faces that could, like lips could move and like these huge advancements where it's like, wow, that totally changes the game visually. Or in the case of Unity, actually having faces. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but it's like now, you know, it's, it's tough to see. It's like, yeah, that does look better, but is that essential? Like would this gameplay experience not be as good for me if like that didn't look that good, if that one little ray of sunlight wasn't that crisp? And so to me, what's coming through now is like, wow, that's a point of this game that would be totally boring before. That in the previous gen, every single game was re- that was released in that genre didn't even think about that. And every single adventure game that came out in the seventh gen was just like, yeah, there's dudes and you fight them. Devil May Cry, it's like, yeah, there's just guys. And then occasionally you bump into like bigger guys that have different animation, which makes them feel tougher. And like that was games. And now it's like, no, you're obsessed with this one orc because that's how your playthrough happened. And it's not something like Far Cry or Wolfenstein did where it was like, oh, you can save this guy or this guy. You can do this mission or that. It was like, no, this one guy, and you don't even have to care about that, but these little like organic things are happening in the game. It was like, it was like the combat system in Arkham Asylum. It was like, everyone's gonna do this now. That's like the new standard of, of, of action games. So you think uh, more significance to play uh, death? for action games or uh, for Batman or uh, for... It's just not my preferred style of combat. But, but it's, I, I do like that dying matters. I right. think that, I like that's that. the best part of the thing. To the come nemesis out of that. system is really cool. Yeah, yeah. I think there's yeah. I think there's two different styles of combat. There's like I want to look awesome doing this, and I want to do an awesome job at this. Right. And I think well, yeah. I the, prefer Dark the Souls is the yeah, comparison yeah. that like doesn't matter how that looked, I survived, and that yeah. in and of itself is an like achievement. Like you don't even you don't even know how it looked because you were too busy trying not to die. Right. Yeah. Whereas like I found myself, I played Shadow of Mordor a, for a little while, didn't get into it, but like because I found myself just watching the combat and I'm like, yeah, this looks really cool, but I'm just mashing square. I guess I hit triangle just now to dodge. <laughs> but specifically, actually the combat the combat system in Mordor actually was not next gen because that just borrowed the system that Arkham had used um, with a little bit of uh, um, 
combos and stuff like that that you could register that like you can maybe Batman will pick that up from them. But specifically, again, making something that was common in games, making it exciting, making it something to get excited about in the game by itself, where it's like, I don't actually care what's going on in the story in Mordor, I'm just super into Pugface because I can't kill this damn guy. Every time I try to go get him, <laughs> I die and he gets promoted. Yeah. And so it's like, by the time I get, to, you know, I'm like, you know, eight hours into this game and this guy's still around and I still Pug haven't face. taken him out. So am I gonna do the story thing or am I gonna do this separate thing that just blossomed in the game itself? Kind of like the Sims or like Spore, like, you know, PC simulation games tried to do, where it's just like yeah. this emergent gameplay where I want to watch you play because that's like, what are you doing? I can't even recognize your play experience. Uh, can I do a shallow one? I was recently just watching Blood. He, he called us in. He's like, hey, come look at this rain. Uh, so we go in his <laughs> office. He's playing Drive Club. Uh, the, the weather is on now. And when you're in first person, the rain has physics on it. Uh. So when you turn, the rain like kind of moves across your windshield as if real rain would. That's rad. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've never seen that before. That is what I always want in a new generation is those things. Kind of a kind of a sister argument to what you're saying right now. Yeah. That's when I gave up hope. This is before Thief came out. We had them in the office. They were playing Thief for like yeah. an hour on the PS4. And I was like, Thief was this year, 2014. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this game looks kind of cool. Like, uh, I don't know. This could be kind of fun. You know, I was bummed that you couldn't customize your character or whatever. But like, the second I was like, nope, this game is going to be bad. I don't know, it's just intuition. I saw the rain hitting puddles, and it looked really bad. You could just see the, like, three different textures for the rain animation. It was just like, boop, doo doo Boop, doo 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 And I was just like, and I was just like wow, down. that looks really bad. This game is trash. <laughs> Damiani, is Bayonetta 2 next gen? Uh, no. Why? Because it's... On Wii U, and you guys don't think Wii U is next gen? Don't see you guys. That I asked you. That was just me. I asked you. Uh, I don't know. It, it looks pretty much the same as the the last one, so I don't think it was trying to push like you know visual fidelity. So it wasn't going for the visual department of like the so-called you know look of the current gen games on PS4, or Xbox One, or high-end PC. The gameplay. I guess you can call the n gameplay beyond next gen because it's so good. I can nothing, call it beyond nothing, next nothing, gen. Like ninth nothing gen this, gameplay nothing already. Nothing this gen has even. Yeah, it's in the ninth generation of gameplay right now. What does now. that mean? What makes a gameplay so good? I don't even know so what that means. It's just, it's like so, it's just so far beyond what exists right now. I hate the word gameplay. Yeah, You're I hate, wrong business. Yeah, I hate the word eighth, ninth generation, or the phrase ninth generation, eighth generation, seventh generation of games. Okay, Doesn't you got it. You got to count where you are. You can't. March. I hate March. I don't want to know we're three months into the year. We need to go back to like 16 bit, 8 bit, <laughs> Thursday. 32 bit. That's I hate right. Thursday. Thursday, Thursday we're in like the 2 million bit error or something. That made shit. it simpler, yeah. This when should they were just be just a like, day by end like any other yeah. numbers. Yeah. They shouldn't have names. Wednesday. <laughs> what does that even mean? Just Winter. Like, it's giving Who the hell like, is when? It's, it's like too. I don't know. It, it's, it's too much, I think, for what it is. It, so, it sounds like. They bring, like Lord of the Rings, like the fourth age of like you know the new era, blah blah. blah. It's like the sixth age of gaming, blah blah. blah. Like, it sounds like this grand like epic like. It is. It's, oh, it's totally epic. epic. Yeah. But, okay. Do they do that? Like I know like how they do it in like movies. Like you know, they do like the eras. It makes sense based on the description of like what it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't do that in Gold gaming. Game, it's just we, we used to. We kind of did it for like games. we did like the the bits like uh, for the you know processors, but we went away from that. Now we're just like. Well, what do we do now? Uh, seventh error. Of, I don't think that shit existed until we stopped after the 64-bit error because they were like, oh, what do we do now? The DVD era of video yeah, games? 64 was weird now because we're in PS2, the, like, or PS1 was 32. So like, even that didn't, wasn't quite yeah, like then, Yeah, then they yeah. were all off. It's like, oh, yeah. wait, what do we do? Not everyone's on the same page. Yeah. Damn it. I Why did you do that? I gen until this gen. I never heard people call it. It wasn't until like the last year and a yeah. half that I saw people actively trying to label like, I think Wikipedia also was like, we gotta like, we gotta categorize all this. We're gonna like standardize all the generations with a number, because it's like the most basic simple thing. I promise you that wasn't just made this year. I promise you Wikipedia I bet like in like 20 something that. years now, people have a better way to describe some of this stuff and they'll have like a better I mean, name. that's the thing like, the They're gonna call this people the call the golden age. age and the yeah and then like the new new wave and stuff. They named that ten or twenty years after the fact. Yeah, so we know? gotta wait. These like are gonna Phil be the Noir dark ages. Was named way later. Yeah, I mean, 
just like in film, like this is the age of the franchise. Like games are sort of the same. It's like yeah. it's all just schlocky trash to make money. We call it the DLC age. We could microtransaction age. The okay. season pass age. Yeah, the season pass the, age. The age of bugs. Um, so I do yeah. want to talk about Microsoft's year because I feel like they ended this year in a much better position than they started this year. Uh, They've gone from fourth string to third. <laughs> Man, I'm not going to be popular this episode. No, that's I'm saying a lot of pretentious and offensive things. Ian's <laughs> a fan favorite because he's offensive. And then, Do you like, ever cross the wrong leg? I crossed this leg. I never crossed this leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it really feels, weird. It's, you're stretching muscles you don't normally stretch. I feel really weird right now. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, that must be it. Good, That's you, why I'm so acerbic you can and unlikable. Switch. You can switch. I was doing the other leg for a while. I'm trying. This is switched. By the way, we talked about Brandon socks. Huh? Let's take a peek at Ian's socks right now. <laughs> yeah. We got oh. like really cool colors on his right foot, like sherbet colors, basically. <laughs> yeah, sherbet. And then so you're straight up purple on oh, left he's, foot. He's Doctor Seuss. Okay. Purple. With someone else's names initialed on the toes. I, I don't know. It's just a brand. Okay. These are women's socks that I got at Costco mm -hmm. for seven dollars. <laughs> How could you say no? You can't say no to that. All right. Um, so let's talk about why. How did Microsoft pull that off this year? How did they get there? By lowering their Wait, price and taking the connect out of what? that fucking bundle. Yeah, I think that was That's a huge they thing. Did. That was like probably they, it, right? It was they, wasn't no, that they, simple. They took the thing like they a year and a half after the fact, like when they had that. Stupid, terrible first announcement of their dumb system mm -hmm. where they were like, hey, we made a system for soccer moms to watch TV. Uh, also, gamers are cool. And then, like, everyone was like, what? It's too expensive. We don't want the Kinect. What are you doing? You've betrayed all of us. And then now, a year and a half later, they're like, hey, let's take the Kinect out and... and Focus more on game. Let's do all the things that we should have done in the first place and that everyone told us over and over we should have done in the first place. Let's do those things. And now everyone's like, good job, Microsoft, you did it. I'm like, no, you made a good decision two years too late. It clearly wasn't too late. They're catching up. Well, yeah, the game yeah if, you, if you lower a price and take out useless hardware, you're going to sell more units. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Like, they should have done this from the word go, and then they wouldn't have been behind in the first place. Uh, it's bad business making up. They're doing, they're doing what they should have done originally, and it's just making up for bad decisions. I think uh, I think Don Matrick left last year, uh, or I mean in 2013. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that Phil Spencer started until this year, and so this is basically the year of Phil Spencer. Uh, Al Pacino, is he the one who looks like Al Pacino? None of them look like Al Pacino. <laughs> one of these guys looks like Al Pacino to me. I think it's Phil Spencer. Man, I saw a trailer for a, a movie guy. where Al Pacino's a singer. <laughs> the most charming dude in that movie. Really? Yeah. Who would have thought that Al Pacino could be like a, a wholesome romantic comedy guy? Huh. He Kill could him. probably do. He was in uh, Scent of a Woman, right? He was charming in that. Yeah. Uh, Phil Spencer's remember. a guy who likes to wear tight t-shirts. And uh, mm. Brandon Jones is a really good impression of him, actually. Shape your experience is the one. <laughs> yeah, I got really good. <laughs> Because it just gets really chews on his words. Maybe it's not the Al Pacino guy. Xbox. <laughs> I don't think so. It's not who's, that good. It's not that good actually. But it, anything I can do to make somebody laugh, I'll do it's every specific. time. It's specific. It's good. Specific. Which one is the Bond villain? Is that Sony? Remember at like E3, he came out wearing that like suit with the like shiny lapels, and everyone was like, Sean Layden. I want you to know, Sean Layden's the mafia boss. Phil Harrison okay. kind of looks like a Bond villain. Sure. Yeah, he's a younger guy. Yeah. I, I get them all confused. I can't remember who's who. So Phil Spencer is head of Xbox. Yeah. Xbox is in his job title. Oh, yeah, no, he doesn't look like Al Pacino, no. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember yeah. this guy now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this was his year, and I mean, he did a lot of interviews. He, he's been a lot more... Uh, ...enthusiast-friendly uh, than Don Matrick was. That was me avoiding the word gamer. I've worked so hard on it. Let's just say gamer-friendly. You can say friendly. it in this show, right? He's gamer-friendly. I can. I don't like that word. But like that's what he is. He's just like, I'm for you gamers. I like you gamers. I understand you gamers. The like, word gamer is weird. Well, like, here's the hard part. Is like if you're gonna come out with a new console and you're making this huge announcement, like you can't come out and be like, hey, so we want to make a video game console, and we were just checking with you guys about what do you, what do you, what do you guys want. 
for like a console, like you have to come out and be like, this is it. This is right. our this is our new and they goal. Did it wrong. This is right because they came out <laughs> first because they were like the first to come out and announce everything. Yeah. And then Sony was like, oh, oh okay, yeah, scratch let's those do, off the list. Oh, yeah, let's highlight those. Right. Yeah. I know, like, and then like they came out and they're like, okay, here's here's our big bold new step. That's exactly what Microsoft is going to do. So then he came out and was like, okay, here's where we messed up. Our whole vibe now is going to be. We we are gonna listen to you guys, like which is hilarious that Sony is the one that ended up having this huge like PlayStation experience. You would think right. like the knee jerk reaction from Microsoft would be like, ah, uh, we'll fans, throw fans. everybody a party. Yeah, like, like, that's the thing all is DLC like, for free. That's know? the thing is like, yeah, Microsoft came out first, so they were at a disadvantage in that regard. And then Sony was like, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's do it right. And then they did. They blew it out of the water, getting ahead, I think. But then they did something like PlayStation experience first, and they nailed it. Right. So it's like. I think that Sony just has better business acumen than Microsoft, maybe? I don't know. It's like Microsoft has always been struggling to understand who and what they are or something. I don't know. Uh, so I want to correct you. Uh, Sony announced their console first. They did um, that for, before Microsoft announced their console. I think, yeah, I think specifically I'm talking about the press conferences. Like, oh, at E3. Because they announced, yeah, they announced and they didn't really sit. Like, Sony announced first? They announced, yeah, like when Sony announced, they announced, you know, Gaikai, and like that really hasn't happened yet. There were a lot of things that they announced at that press conference were like, Oh, okay, but we haven't. We didn't see the. We didn't see the console yet, didn't we? No, you did not see the console. Yeah, at they the announced internet. it was PlayStation Four. But you we saw Knack, but no console. Right. Oh, yeah. Weird. I forgot that in my mind. Well, then Microsoft has no excuse. No, they don't. Um, Wait, when did they do the, except everything the video now. where they handed the used That was game? at E3. That was at, oh, yeah, the okay. second day of E3. Because in my mind, I, I put that in the original announcement. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that makes more sense. <laughs> I just remembered, in correcting you, I got to do corrections. Oh. Start corrections music. 30 oh, man. minutes in. So late into the episode. <laughs> okay, uh, I hate you. We, uh, we did see a sword in the Legend of Zelda footage. Link did have a sword atop that horse. He was swinging that around, so it's not exclusively bow and arrow. Oh. Uh, Street Fighter 4 had four boxed releases. I said three, it's actually four. Though, to be fair, How they're not all $60. It's not like, oh, they're making me buy the same game every year. It's like you're buying a cheaper, cheaper, and cheaper version of the, uh, I, I can't take it. Uh, and also, the Nintendo Store is not in uh, Times Square, it's in Rockefeller Center. Someone said Times Square. Probably Bloodworth. Ugh. End corrections music. Bloodworth and his specious knowledge of New York. Specious? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, let's talk about leaks. Leaks are a big thing in 2014. Uh, one of our first Sam? episodes of this show, we talked about uh, Assassin's Creed Bombs. Unity and Assassin's Creed Comet. That was one of our first things we ever talked about. Uh, the Smash Bros. Wa roster leaked. Um, Victory, of course, leaked recently. Do you think this year is an outlier of leaks. Oh, and all the anti-kernel stuff? Basically, all of Microsoft's year was leaked months and months ahead of time. The white Xbox and the, the existence of the Halo collection. Anyway, do you think that's an outlier? Street Fighter Five. Or do you think this trend's gonna continue? Are we gonna see leaks this much every single year? Probably. Yeah. We always see leaks like this. For the last few years, this always happens. These are worse leaks than usual. I think the internet, mm. like, as the internet gets quote unquote better and people get better at it, and people get douchier, as they seem to be doing, we'll get more leaks. So I think yeah. what, what used to happen is that like you'd hear rumors all the time, and you kind of have to sift through like what was actually a rumor and what wasn't. And now a lot of times we'll get an announcement, it's like, oh, this is it. I mean, this is clearly, that's it. We just have, it would, <laughs> yay. Because we already knew yeah. it was coming. We opened the door and like, the girl didn't come out of the cake, she was already out. And sitting on the couch eating cake. And we're like, oh, hi. <laughs> she's like, oh, it's your birthday. And you're like, oh, okay. And you want to sit like, on the couch get, and I'll eat get, some cake? You're no, like, I'll I get guess. Back the, I'll get back in the cake. I'll get yeah. back in the cake. <laughs> okay. No, 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 you don't have to now. I'll you don't have my overcoat. <laughs> uh, you know? I mean, it's like in the old days, the rumor mill was magazines, right? Like you'd Oh, yeah. PlayStation Magazine or PSN or what was it called? PSM. Yeah. Back in the day, I, I had PSM. But, uh, or like, you know. EGM had EGM, the Q-Man. Like, yeah, and you like, you'd read like a thing and it was like, whoa, what is this? Is like, is, there's gonna be a second Silent Hill game? This is crazy, is yeah. this true? This can't be true, it's too good. They've later confirmed and then, like, they just made some later, of them up. Really? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, they had to have, because yeah. there wasn't like, that's the thing is like, we all come from a time before the internet. Yeah. When like, there wasn't, a NeoGAF to instantly tell you that Bloodborne is a thing. Well, like, IGN had a headline today, I think, that was like, or yesterday, it was like, so, Ken Levine's gotta be working on something. 
Yeah, <laughs> what is it? Who knows? Are you dead serious? Yeah, and it was like, what? <laughs> Gotta be something. He's probably you know, not just like, fishing. Okay. No. What is it interesting to create an interesting conversation? Like, there's that, and then there's like, okay, well, this is obvious. This victory is obviously real. I mean, you don't they're not think gonna. Means working on anything? I do. It's just like hilarious. So, <laughs> oh, like, yeah. That was IGN. I, I expected of Kotaku a polygon, but oh, IGN. oh shots fired. <laughs> uh, so I guess basically my question, I'll direct this at Damiani. Lessons learned. Don't do that. Should we? <laughs> Don't direct anything at him. Reflect. Uh, right, <laughs> Reflect. Back at me. Uh, oh so God. Is this? Are, are there lessons to be learned? Should, if you have a video game announcement, should you just put it out there sooner, to get ahead of the leaks? Is that something like was Smash Bros. too protective of its roster? That kind of thing. So okay, and, and the. I'm kind of. Uh, I am a little torn about this. I feel like, especially like creating creating stuff myself. So not not about like like leaks, but if you're the person who's creating it and you're t- talking about the timing, I feel like in this day and age, I feel like it's not safe to sit on something for too long. I feel like once something's ready to go, you you should like get it out the door as soon as possible. Not just like the game, but the, like the announcement. Like, hey, we got a trailer for this. It's cut. It's ready to go. You're seeing more and more publishers can do things on their own terms. They don't have to wait for E3. They don't have to wait for Comic Con or PAX. They can just do like Nintendo, a Nintendo Direct. Hey. Just giving a weekend a heads up, like, hey, next week we're doing a live stream announcement of something huge, and like, if it's your like, you know, the next Assassin's Creed, like, it's like, hey, just schedule like a week. We have a trailer for this, like, let's next week, let's do it. I think they should do it now instead of holding on it. Yeah. I mean, stealth, like stealth, like doing it like a stealth announcement, like that. That's that could work too. But if you want to get more people focused on that that moment, hey, we're doing a live stream. More people have a chance to tune in. I would I would counter saying yes if the alternative was someone else is going to find out about it like someone's already informed you hey we think someone already heard about this that shouldn't have heard about it there's a chance they might post about it we don't know yeah. we have the trailer ready to go maybe we should just put it out there ahead of them yeah. in that case I totally agree put the trailer out there don't risk it don't like don't have someone ruin your surprise the coming from the creator part of it right so just if you have it ready to go and there's any indication someone's got advanced knowledge of it and they shouldn't don't take the chance like enjoy let, let people enjoy the surprise and enjoy Control the announcement message, basically. however if you have something done in like say january like square enix like we have the next final fantasy 15 trailer ready to go in january but we're not gonna show it till e3 like, no don't do that yeah schedule some kind of live stream or a mini event and hey hey week from now two weeks from now Tune in to our, live, our Twitch channel or tune in to squarenix.com slash Final Fantasy 15. You have something there you're going to check and you know what it's going to be. And then you're like, it's on your terms. Well, I think there's also like, there's a right way and a wrong way too, as with everything. Like, like PT, that's the right way to hold on to a secret and drop the bomb, you know? The and best possible way. Best, best, yeah, best possible way to do that. And then I think that Telltale's release of uh, Game of Thrones. Not, not really the wrong way, but not a great way to do it, because all of a sudden it's just like, oh, the game's out, and then everyone, like, no one has time to play it, no one has time to, like, l- even realize, or, like, review it, you know, and, like, <laughs> I don't know, like, it, there's, there's a right way and a wrong way, you know, like, I think sometimes, like, a stream, if you publicize it enough, like, if you're Nintendo or whatever, but, like, if you're No Man's Sky, and you're, you know, like, if they just put out a trailer, it's, it was incredible, so it probably would have caught steam over time, but, like, Doing that at E3 is like a huge big thing because they have the platform. You yeah. Know? So Whereas that's if someone, if someone, had, if someone had leaked it, yeah, then it wouldn't have gotten the steam. I yeah. don't know. I think that speaks to if you're going to do something like that, maybe you need to have a shorter lead time, especially if we want to do. Right. We need to have something big for E3. We, we want PT to be at E3. Start developing that within a time frame that it has less of a chance to be discovered by people. I also think that. I assume the team that worked on PT, but also the like Telltale team, they're really small. It's very hard, there's not like a lot of outside people being involved initially. Less chance of it being leaked because the team's not big. Giant yeah. company, yeah. Uh, giant companies, if you're not, if you, uh, I don't know. Konami's so, kind of a big company. I, I guess Kojima's really secretive. He's really good at protecting really his good. stuff. So he knows how it works. I think outside of video games, an example is like uh, the Avengers 2 trailer. Where it's just like, if you tune in on that episode coming in one week, and yeah. just somebody ruined that for and you. And everyone's like, yeah. screw you. But that yeah. trailer was probably done, like, that pro- trailer was probably done for 
a while. Yeah, well, it was I think not so. done that day, and like we're gonna show it next week. And they, 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 well, they were sitting. They I were sitting on it. They should have shown it as soon as possible. Yeah. I think that was that's a, a, that's a good point actually, because yeah, like, one of my things I hate at, at events is when someone will come come out and talk for ten minutes about the trailer you're about uh-huh. to watch, and it's yeah. like just show, just show it because yeah. you're building me up way too much for this thing. Yeah. yeah. Whereas like you should just you know play like catch me in my moment where I'm just kind of like huh, and then boom, and then hit yeah. me with no expectations, like, and then I have questions, and then answer the questions. Concept stuff that we got like a lot of it EAs. Or oh, whatever, yeah. like, mm-hmm. she's just like, no, this is like worse than a leak because it's like sanctioned by the company and like boring. The Mirror's Edge stuff <laughs> specifically, yeah. real bad. What yeah. if, what if, like, what if, it, it, like, leaks are going to keep happening, right? What if instead of, because it's always kind of like, uh, like Street Fighter Five, right? It leaks and then they show the same thing and mm-hmm. you're like, uh, okay, yeah, we already saw that, but it's still, still cool. She got what back if, in the cake. Yeah. What if, like, what if, like, companies started saying, like, all right, I mean, this might encourage leaking, but like, what if they're like, all right, uh, PT, like the con, let's say in an alternate reality. Okay. Nope, this is a bad example because it's right. too cool. But like, let's say like uh, Dragon Age trailer, like The Witcher 3, whatever, like a trailer leaks, and like that's the trailer they were going to show at PlayStation Experience, whatever. They were like, all right, we've got a week and a half demo. Put out a playable demo. If something blow everybody's mind. If like, something leaks, yeah, leak something. React do something to that. crazy. Yeah, yeah. That like even sense. if it doesn't work. Yeah. Like just blow their minds even more. Be like, all right, you leaked that. That's great. Take it as a compliment. Yeah. Like there's excitement. Now we got to do something even crazier to like up the ante. Yeah. I wonder what that. I mean, it would it's be. It'd be so, Batman. It'd be escalation. Like, it's just so joking. tough to build to to create those announcements. You know, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like it's like Halo Two. You know, worked so hard on this demo, and then like they were done with E Three, and they're like, oh crap, we were so busy working on the demo, we were making the actual game. And so for someone to like yank the rug out from under yeah. you, and like <laughs> and then I, they I threw out that demo. I well, think I've done enough of that. I think Street Fighter Five is a really interesting scenario because it's like. You know, like you actually, the Avengers was a good point to bring up. You don't want to like, yeah, you, like, like, and I never want to say anybody's baiting anything because it's like that is like, you know, shaming the victim and like, right. I, I have to think it's, you know, you should always be like, that sucks that that happened for you. Sorry. Like yeah. you didn't do anything right, wrong, right. but you're probably asking for it if like day after day after day after day, you're like five days till the trailer. It's like someone's going to grab that. Yeah, thing. Yeah, you're exactly. literally like, you know, just baiting it. But if you're like, oh, we're going to make some announcement. You don't know if Marvel just says some announcement, then it's like, I don't know where to search. I don't know who to hack. You know, like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know where to look. Hack but the thing all. that bothers me about Street Fighter it literally was just in the PlayStation event. They're like, we're going to have this community event. We're going to have this for you. You can buy tickets to it. We want everyone to come there. Come to this thing. And, and somebody's we're going to stream like, it all Mine. live. Somebody's like, I'm yanking this thing out of that because that's not cool enough for me. No. That you're literally like allowing me to go and meet developers and then on the cherry on the Sunday is going to be this cool announcement. It's like, my cherry. Well, like, actually, <laughs> in that case, what makes me angrier than anything, it was officially posted from Sony in Japan. Just somebody like I mean, yeah, up that a time was just I think a screw up. Yeah, yeah it was they, just a dumb they screw up. Miscalculated the like when they were, when they were scheduling before they went on vacation to come to yeah. America to do s- the PlayStation experience. They just scheduled it a day in advance. And didn't have another person on a different d- on the other time. Oh man, you know, like I didn't that know was that. just like a total like I hit the wrong number. <laughs> yeah. So, oops, you know. Oops. Innocent That's mistake. a big oops. I mean, the thing with like movies, just to veer off for a second, like uh, Huber sent an article the other day about like the state of movies in in the current state of movies, whatever. But uh, uh, like the case of Avengers is so funny to me because those movies to me now, and I, this might not be a popular opinion, but hey, I'm used to that. Mm-hmm. But like those movies almost just feel like trailers in themselves. They're two-hour <laughs> trailers for the next. Avengers movie. No, like, it's not there. There's no. the next Hulk movie. Like, it's all about the after credits, like, tease, you know? Like, that's why I was so happy that at the end of, uh, I won't say what it is, but at the end of Guardians, like, it wasn't an Avengers tie in because yeah. I was so afraid of that. I was like, don't ruin this beautiful thing with your crappy Avengers. And they just have a weird joke. Yeah. Yeah. And Love it was that. beautiful. It was yeah. perfect. And I was like, like, the current state of movies is that every movie is a lead into another movie. Every movie is just a product placement for the next movie. It's mm-hmm. just advertisement. Everything's a trailer. So, like, when an Avengers trailer is being teased... <laughs> right, right? You yeah, mean. you win. Yeah. But, like, when an Avengers trailer is being teased, I'm like, okay, you're teasing me for the tease for the tease for the thing that's ultimately just a tease. Yeah. And it's just like, come on. Like, when do I get... The cake. Eat it well, up. if you, you get more eat. leaks, yeah, you never yeah. get you never yeah. get the cake. And that's you the get thing. It's like, fight back. That's the thing. We're yeah. in a we're in a world where leaking almost doesn't matter anymore because 
even when the thing comes out, it's just a leak for a leak for a trailer for What if you had a trailer for a leak? Yeah. What if somebody hacked a website mm -hmm. and then that's where we're getting now with yeah. uh, with fake, interview? Fake yeah. Did they make they made a trailer for the Christmas leak? They're like coming Christmas Day, more Sony information. Are you dead serious? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna like wait the release a bunch. Did? Yeah, they're gonna release oh a bunch more. God. No, I mean they didn't. I don't know. If they made like, an oh, actual video, they, uh, but like but they teased it. They if you, you, you you could hack information and then say I have the trailer ahead of time and then put up a trailer for a hack of a leak. But that's trailer. what Sony of should a game then, of a trailer. Sony should then have like. I mean, this is ridiculous, but like they should duplicate an infrastructure, uh -huh. give everyone two computers. One is on the extranet, one is on the internet that, that people can, can access and hack, and everything on them is fake. They're all <laughs> fake trailers and all fake information. And then you, you have an intranet yeah. where all your real stuff happens. It's that's like Fast and the Furious. You know, you have to send 10 cars out. Yeah. And you got to like yeah. find the right one. And they so, figure it out by how close the, yeah. the bottom of the car is to is the road, which means which there's more people in the car, which means... It's, Wait, no, that was the Italian job. The Italian job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one has the money because it's riding lower. Yeah. But I just yeah. I just want to say... Okay, dump trucks. I, but I just want to say, actually, that like I've been surprised in the last four or five months how obsessed I am with this concept. And I just want to point out for fans, if we're talking about your year in re your review, there are some topics that we have not discussed on GT Time. One that rhymes with blamer blade, you know, that like we're just like, eh, that's not. I just don't. Do you want to? That's no, a I don't. Of we're because doing the year in rear in review. How do we ignore blamer blade? <laughs> because. Because there's not, first of all, what the hell else are you going to say that hasn't already been said? And yeah. it's just not, we have to pick and choose our battles. Like, there's a lot to talk about, you know, people being fired, like terrible things happening to people that were just like, we're not going to add to the conversation. You know, there's, there's not really a point that we need to bring to that. Sometimes, and I feel being game yeah. trailers and talking about leaked announcements, and it's like right in our wheelhouse. Yeah. Like, it's really something that like, I don't, know if we need, I don't know if we need to create a show where we like cover leaks, because that seems <laughs> counterintuitive. Oh, don't do that, gross. Because <laughs> that's like on. the opposite of yeah. like being offended by it, but. I got a little soapboxy this year on, on social media about, I don't like this. It was our first real fight, you Done. and Damiani. I know. Wow. I loved it. He left. He moved to Texas because we got in that fight. <laughs> yeah. That uh, was the day he came in, so no, I'm leaving. Another big weird trend of 2014, big buys. Listen to this. All three of these happened this year. Amazon purchased Twitch for $970 million. Facebook purchased Oculus for two billion dollars. So weird. Microsoft purchased Minecraft for 2.5 billion dollars. The Mojang. biggest purchase of the three of those. Did they purchase Minecraft or Mojang? Minecraft. Oh, I think and company, Mojang. Right? Yes. Right, right, right. They purchased, I'm unclear, yeah. They bought think, Mojang. Mojang yeah. only makes Minecraft. Well, and not shows I'm out. What's, also, what's funny yeah. about all three of those announcements is like, no, like, all three of those things aren't something where you're like, oh, my, 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 Minecraft? Let me, okay, Minecraft, let me look that right. up. Like, Twitch, eh? Is this, an, is this a new yeah. thing on the streets? The kids are sure. really excited about this Twitch thing? You know, like, they were all, like, tried and true, and so that's why they're so expensive, because, like, they were way too late. Oh, they're way too, they, took, they seriously took their time buying Minecraft. Mm -hmm. Way too late to the party on Twitch, you know? And, I mean, even though Oculus hasn't come out yet, you know, it's like... I had already tried on and played extensively that product <coughs> before they even considered it. Like, eh, we should probably buy these guys. No, but I think though on CNBC they have to explain what Oculus is. Right. When they t when they say that, you know right. what I mean. To us, it to makes total sense. But on CNBC, they're like, what what is this? But what what are we the knowledgeable and expert panel of uh, uniquely super, talented and sweet awesome people? Yeah. Yeah. Should I think that. anyone should put watching awesome this, in there somewhere. I hate yeah. the word awesome. <laughs> anyone that goes to game trailers or any of these websites, yeah, obviously knows all these things. But yeah, like someone watching MSNBC or whatever, never heard of Twitch. Right. But like, they also, I mean, I guess they might follow acquisitions just on a business sense, you know, and then they would be like, but everybody's heard of Minecraft. Like, yeah. all my cousins and their little kids, like, they play Minecraft, you know, like. They're going to be making money off those poor little cousins for years. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe. <laughs> Why do you say maybe? Uh, I think Minecraft is probably the least exciting purchase out of those three. That is my question. Because the other two are technology. They, rep they represent like a yeah. thing that encompasses all things, whereas mm -hmm. Minecraft is a brand. You know, it's like you can't stream other games through Minecraft. You can only stream Minecraft through Minecraft. You know, and so like people are, you know, how many Minecraft clones are there? It's ridiculous. Oh, like, uh, it is insane. But none of yeah. them are good. Um, Who knows? Yeah. No, but they're None at least more popular. Right. But the, yeah, po yeah, as there you popular. Go. Yeah. Um, but the other, yeah, the other two are platforms. You know, it's like there's all sorts of fun ways that that can grow and things that you can well, also, like, facilitate Twitch, through it. Twitch is exciting if they don't like, as they've said, they won't like if they don't like sully the waters with corporate malarkey. Like, 
the the Amazon back end, like those S3 servers or whatever, like Twitch is only going to get better because of this. Facebook, the Facebook Oculus thing is so perplexing to me. I mean, Michael Pactor has got it all like figured out in his mind. Like they're going to sell you uh, VR car commercials when you're on Facebook. And I'm like, Facebook he's, is the last thing wrong. I want to look at in VR. Like he's that sounds wrong. like they're the not worst that. thing. Like it's all white and if my eyes start to bleed just thinking about it. Like going on Facebook and VR like sounds like the most depressing, awful thing. Like I, you know, you're gonna look at like your VR ex girlfriend and just be like, ugh. No, it's not, that's like not what? <laughs> what are they thinking? Like they have to just have some other play. Yeah, absolutely. It was Facebook wants to be as big as Google or Amazon. Right. Kyle, if you could have one of those three objects in your pocket, if you could own Twitch or Oculus or Minecraft, what would you pick? That's a fantastic question. You really turn the tables on me. I'm the one who asks questions. <laughs> You know what I want? <laughs> Literally turning the table right now. I want. Yeah, you can you can look at the time. Uh, I want oh Twitch. God. I think I want Twitch of the three of those things. Of course. Uh, Oculus because Minecraft it's a thing. Yeah, Minecraft I mean like Minecraft's show. a thing, but again, and then it's I won't like get not sued. But like, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> I own Minecraft. It's fine. But yeah. Uh, uh, Oculus. Can we talk about the Telltale Minecraft stories thing? Because that's blown my mind. That's yeah, not that's really year in review, but obviously that, that's no. news this It happened this year, bitch. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. But like, I thought that was a joke. So I was like, no. that's a good one. Yeah, I'm like, like oh crap. Oh. So earlier this morning, <laughs> have to talk about it, it was I'm announced just... that Telltale is making a Minecraft game. What the hell? Settle yeah. down, Telltale. Yeah, yeah, settle down. Get out of somebody. Get out of my wheelhouse. Damiani, can it possibly be good? Yes or no, and why? Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, it could. Possibly be good. Why? Because Telltale can make good. They tell good stories and they hire Operative good writers. Can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they it, can make good games. I mean, they've had. They've had, they've had, they've had bad. Yes, yeah. They, yeah. they've had bad games. Yeah. But I would say like they haven't had. They haven't done worse than like average since they started doing se- episode one, season one of The Walking Dead. Nothing's been worse than average. Mm. It's either been average to exceptional. Minecraft, so it's been in that range. Right. But the, fun, the funniest thing about this to me is like. You, it's literally just like anything you want stories, like you know what I mean. Like it's like yeah, it's, it seems less like okay, we're doing yeah. our thing, but now with Minecraft, it's like no, 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 Minecraft's doing a thing, and we're gonna work on it. You know, like we're the ones yeah. that are gonna go in there and make it. Well, they're making a whole story. Like I don't know, like like you have to play Minecraft to play this, right? It's not gonna no. be like it's it's, it's its own a, separate it's a game. Standalone game. No, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a standalone Telltale. It's... I don't know Story. what graphical style it'll have, but it'll be like point and click it looks theoretically. Like Minecraft. Yeah. Except you're a dude with a beard. Like it's like, what is the story? Yeah, this feels nebulous. Like yeah. what, what? There's no like. I, I, I might be ignorant here, but there's no inherent lore other than what fans have made up in their heads about yeah. Minecraft. Yeah. So there's no nothing to draw upon necessarily. Like everything else they've adapted has been. It's a keyword adapted. Yeah. They've adapted something. Yeah. Even and it's been based on a popular franchise or a popular story. This is just a popular I guess, a world. Yeah. So they have like the license to do whatever well, they want. The like well, we're gonna make up a story. So like they could adapt Sleeping Beauty and just put it in Minecraft. Like hey, it's the Minecraft. <laughs> the Telltale presents Minecraft. Mm-hmm. It's like or it's uh, Romeo and Juliet or something. You know. Well, like I'm so ingrained in seedlings. Like it's hard for me to think of a uh, of a story. Set in a world similar to Minecraft, like we don't really consider seedlings being like in Minecraft. We just use Minecraft to make it. Yeah. But like, it's hard for me to like think of a story other than that story. So I'm like, man, they better not steal our story. There's, gonna be, like, there's like, absolutely gonna be overlap. There, yeah. And you like shake your fist every time you see it. Yeah. They're just gonna make Tron. Yeah. A real person I mean, gets stuck in Minecraft. Tron, I guess if you think oh, about gross. it. Oh, gross. That won't happen. Yeah. That'd just be transfer the Minecraft world. Yeah, I guess yeah. A real person getting stuck doesn't happen. Um, let's talk about other big announcements of the year. Uh, this was a fun one. Uh, Blizzard announced that Titan was canceled, and we were like, oh my gosh, that's a big deal. I was like, I've never heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> Titan was going to be like the MMO after World of Warcraft. So it was like when that was canceled, it was like, oh no, what are they going to do? Poor Blizzard. <laughs> They're just going to continue making millions of dollars every second. Yep. And then, shoot, a matter of weeks later, here's Overwatch. Here it is. I was like, what? What is it? You, 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 you fooled me. Misdirection. Misdirection, yeah. And then, so they announced Overwatch. And Overwatch is Blizzard's next big initiative. Uh, were you impressed, Brandon? 
for those listening, that's an emphatic nod. Yeah, the eyes opened, the head nodded, the <laughs> eyebrows shot to the ceiling. And they made a Pixar short. There is nothing, yeah. nothing about that announcement that was not superbly pulled off. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. The Again, videos involved leaks. were amazing. Dude, yeah. Maybe that's how you fight the game off leaks. was playable at the event. Yeah, people you're right. played it ten minutes after they found out about it. Yeah, and it was at their own party. The Metallica capped off. It's like I, there's you did it. There's mm -hmm. no there's no there's no thing where it's like well you know what I would have done because that's like where you know I really get pompous is when I like watch a trailer and I'm just like God if you just Okay, if you just moved, yeah, yeah. and then you did, and then you at that part at the end, you didn't. God, it would be perfect. And that's like, there's no, there's not a thing, nothing I can say, from the editing to the writing to the conception to the actual game itself to like adding that type of game to your available roster. It's like, you know, it's like the only way. Like even a young development company that's like, how could I learn from that? Like you can't because you need Blizzard's pedigree to make that kind of an announcement. Like True. you need yeah, the yeah, heaviness yeah. and actually. You know, to be honest, the stagnation of franchises like StarCraft and Warcraft, you know, and uh, even something like Hearthstone, as much as we love that, is kind of like, okay, you know, Thrall again, you know, where it's yeah. just like, what, how did, who's, this gotta be based on something, you know. I gotta remember actually Heroes of the Storm got announced this year. We got the first debut trailer of that. And I was like, okay. I think it's been <laughs> I, like, a for a while. But yeah. I, thought, I thought I'd be way more excited seeing Jaina take on Diablo than I am right now, actually. Mm. Like, it's yeah. kind of, I'm like amused by it, but I'm not like, oh, of course, oh my God, all the franchises together, let's do this. Whereas like Overwatch, it just. The, and, cra the craziest thing about Overwatch is like, I missed the announcement. Didn't, I wasn't watching the keynote or whatever. I've seen a little bit of gameplay. Multiplayer shooter stuff isn't really my thing. I've only seen the last minute and a half of the five, six minute Pixar movie. And I got goosebumps for the majority of what you were just talking about. Yeah, I'm not like, excited. What the hell? I'm probably not. Gonna, <laughs> I'm probably not going to play this game that much. And yeah. it's still like, yeah, yeah. The game probably won't Perfect. be my thing. But like promo yeah. promotion perfection, just nailed it. It's almost. You know, it's it's like not you, fair. I think it's. It's not like when you were like, oh yeah, I really like this trailer. I'm like, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair. It's a six minute, beautiful film. Yeah. Like with some of the best CG. But imagine if you're like a, if you're like a struggling Japanese right. role, role playing developer and you play Dark Souls two and you're like this isn't fair. Right. With all their money and their experience and their quality game design and brilliant ideas. Yeah, that's my that's my question, Damiani. <laughs> can people learn from something from this, or is it really just like no, only Blizzard can pull that off? Is there is there something to learn? Is the the thing you learn is this is what you dream yeah. about. This sure. is this is what you strive to be one day. You got to look back at your beginnings and say, man, remember that time when we had to use in-game visuals only on our, on our like own engine that, were, like, or that we had to like license from like Unreal 3? We couldn't even afford Unreal 4. Who is, who is, Unreal who is speaking right now? In, in, <laughs> some indie, no, this is some indie, indie, indie game, guy. okay. Right. I mean, it's better to aim high and yeah. fail than aim yeah, yeah. for what you can do. And, yeah. and then all of a sudden, like 10 years later, hey man, we bought Pixar. <laughs> Who are these people? Disney, I guess? <laughs> we bought Pixar. <laughs> we made amazing, amazing short films. Oh, that's that's the other thing too, that it wasn't like, oh, who did that? Like Blizzard did that. You know, it's like it was an internal they team at Blizzard Blur. that produced that oh, yeah, 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 that's incredible. That was their in-house no team. That was no an Pixar, entire no way to digital, no yeah. ILM. <laughs> So I think, again, going back to leaks, that's probably a big reason why it didn't leak. It was all internal. Yeah. yeah. And I like Ian's theory that you do this little red herring. You say, oh, Here's sorry, we, you we have nothing start, to show. You start an MMO six years in advance, <laughs> seven years in advance, so that you can cancel it a month before you announce your real game yeah. that you've never mentioned. Yeah. That's awesome. Like It's pretty cool. I know they probably didn't really do that, but if they really did that, Blizzard is incredible. It's like this was going to be a component well, of the MMO. Like, right. They never showed anything. They, 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 not saying they did this, but you could totally be lying for the last six years. Right. Yeah, we're making yeah. progress right. there. Exactly. Exactly. I think, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, every company should do this. Announce something kind of cool, <laughs> but not like a like announce something that's basically the same thing you did before. Like Last Guardian, better. right? Yeah. And oh. then and then Team Ico is going to come out and be like, uh, yeah, uh, we've got this other thing. It's a multiplayer shooter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get ready. Here's a six minute short film. Yeah, the kid shows back up. <laughs> Agro! <laughs> I just cocked a machine gun, but whatever. Um, so we're going to have to just do uh, l Loved It, 
or I'm okay with it, or I hated it for the last few stories. Because okay. we're, we're running lo short on yeah, time. Yeah, I really have to go to the bathroom. Uh, Project Morpheus was announced this year. Brandon? Uh, what's the middle one? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm Ian. okay with it. Damiani? Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes what? You know, like sometimes, always, never, sometimes in the uh, middle. Okay. Uh, Activision uh, did their Sierra initiative this year. No uh, context. So they have their, the their what? Indie, C, in, Sierra came back oh. under Activision. It's yeah. like they're an indie initiative. Uh, Geometry Wars 3 and uh, recently King's Quest. Brandon. Uh, my wife is really excited about it. It's just the name. I mean, we, we got to get good games first before yeah. I can get really excited about it. Ian. Yeah, I mean, I don't care about Geometry Wars at all. King's Quest, the background art is really cool, so... I'm okay with it. I guess the idea is, hey, look at Activision doing small games. Yeah. A hopeful I'm okay with it. Okay. Yeah. We'll see if the Empire can can make something worthwhile. Damiani? Okay with it. I don't trust Activision with anything. Yeah, exactly. Geometry Wars 3 is pretty good. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. <laughs> um, Very lukewarm responses. Uh, the new 3DS was announced this year. Brandon. But I'm okay with it. <laughs> Ian. Yeah, whatever. Damiani. It's next year. But it was announced this year. Okay. That was the thing that was announced. We're well, not getting it this year. Isn't it out well, Japan? Well, 3DS sales Japan. tanked after they announced it in the U.S. After mm -hmm. they announced it, is that what like the announcement? Because I want the new 3DS. Yeah, it's cooler, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Nintendo America. The timing of the announcement was bad. The timing of the announcement was bad. That's like the what the negative. I think that choice. was an awful announcement. Yeah. yeah. The, na the announcement was the worst. They're still not talking about it. I know it doesn't exist. Reggie still will not answer any question about a new 3DS. What is that? Uh, EA does EA Access, their early access thing where you get lots of free games, you get to try EA games early for free, and it's a huge success. Brandon. I'm okay with it. Nice, okay. <laughs> Ian. Whatever. Yeah. Damiani. Sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You picked the you gotta, most you gotta pick kind of stories. interesting headlines yeah. of the year. I think that story's this is crazy. I think that story's crazy because they pulled it off and people like it. Everyone who paid $50 for really the like people, like, yeah. people like I don't sports. hear people talking about it that much. Yeah, it is basically people like, like EA regulars yeah. who are into it. People but all these like stories things. are things that it's like, it's not, it's like free to play. It's really like free to play. It's like, the game's free. What? How are you mad about yeah. free? It you know, 50, so it's like it's EA access is fifty dollars. I'm not talking. I'm not saying. I'm not oh, making okay. that comparison. Financial sure. comparison between the two, but it's what like it? you know, free to play games are like are positive because you are getting something for free. Like this is positive because like you are paying a certain amount of money and getting goods. You know what I mean? It's not like I don't would know. It, so it's 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 something. Would it be that, weird if I go to the bathroom? I drank a talking ran in about twenty ounces of water during this. Well, well who's to blame for that? Me. We got sixty more seconds. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm finished. Last one. Amazon's stupid console, the Fire TV, launched this year. Can I get some I hates it? It sounds neat. It's just <sighs> tough for me to care. It does sound cool, and they are. I hate it. Can and they, they are announcing. Only, they I, are announcing more stuff for it. All I, I want is I not hate it. Ian? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Like, <laughs> someone releasing a failed console. Yeah. I don't hate because the sales damned them automatically. Sure. Like I don't hate that. You want hate? Talk about glamour sclate. <laughs> or, sure. you know, you want hate, talk yeah. about something worth hating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squares, Damiani, what do you think about Fire TV? It's stupid. Yes. Amazon, go go focus on Twitch. Thank you. There we go. You're going to miss okay. him, huh? I'm going to miss that. <laughs> I, need that. I need that at the end of the couch. Uh, programming note to everybody. Uh, the end of the couch is going to be the rotating chair from, from this day forward. Um, we'll just get a new person in every single week. And blood will still be there where Ian is sitting. Just hopefully, you know, not on vacation all the time. Yeah, slacker, man. Slacker. Blood works so hard, man. He stays here so late and gets here so early. He's so critical of me when I. Okay. Um, let's do a closing. But every that was the year in review. I we, I wanted to talk about PT more. I'll do it in our video. PT's awesome. PT was incredible. That's such a weird thing. And I want to make here. more. You know, we actually just as a a, a word to people checking out. Um, I'm, I'm usurping the the bet plug right now. Because I can, I can exercise that power every now and then. But we're getting ready for a Game of the Year award stuff, and like we even did videos where like we asked every single employee of Game Trailers like, what were your personal picks of the year? And it's like I, we still can talk more. Like we're actually not going to do a big trailer wrap up. We're going to do that in January. And like even in January, I want to do more, just kind of year year in the review stuff. Because like a lot of cool stuff happened. They're called the yeah. Bodies. I don't feel like we get to talk about games enough. We don't. I want to do more of that Let's next talk more year. About games. I love talking about games. Uh, <laughs> let's do a bet though. Let's do a bet for after the break. Okay. 
I'm gonna make it really easy. Uh, don't is this, even... this is the first bet of the next season. First bet of season two. This is a, if I win this bet, I'm in the lead. Exactly. Yeah, oh, they, yeah, yeah. The scores the start s- over. The scores are gonna reset. Yeah, oh. because the guest seat needs its own points. Yeah. And you know what I was like when I got really silent and was just struggling to say? It's because I honestly I want to give you that seat. I want to give you the rotating chair. But I feel like everyone else in the office feels offended that they're not on GT time. And so this is my way to make everyone in this office feel happy that they can all be I try to do that every day and it's impossible. It's Although the, I do yeah. have to bring up the question. So yeah. if you're going to come up with a bet, that bet carries over to Bloodworth. And if Damiani's going to make a bet, that bet carries over to the guest. So yeah. just, I think by a rule, no offense, the next guest should not be Ian. Because Ian picking up his bet seems weird. I'd have two chances oh, okay. to win. Oh, I see. You know what I mean? We got to be fair. We get these, these points are important. We yeah. got to play by the rules. Okay. Also, it's weird that you're... You're starting the new season on a lie. How do you mean? Two people are betting for people that aren't. You bet for the. Well, we're starting the new season earlier. Yes. Because it hasn't been a full year of GT time yet, right? Right. So uh, you're starting a little bit okay. earlier. So okay. it's, the the lies will even out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, as long as we fill January, February with enough truths. <laughs> Poor Ian. I promised him 60 I really seconds. Have to pee. Okay. So <laughs> I'm gonna look at the number of views on this episode of GT time when we get back, right before we record. What number will be the last digit? <laughs> Turn off your mic and we'll blur it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, it's your seat's turn to choose whether you want to go first or last. I'll go first. Okay. I don't even know what the question was. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> last digit on the number of views this episode of GT Time will get. Oh, God. Five. Okay. I'm going to pick a nine. I like it because it's not like this or more. Like, it's a very specific number. Yeah. I mean, there's a potential where we could all lose this bet. Or the closest to we'll, it, I guess. We'll do closest to. Okay. But it'll wrap around. Okay, Damiani. Oh, man. I'm wrapping around. No, this is no stress. This was supposed to be a no stress question. Just give me a number, one to ten. Gotta pee, Damiani. <laughs> Seven. <It's> okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say one. Great. Uh, let me lock those in. <clears throat> okay, last lock of 2014. Uh, God, if you'd let those loose over Christmas break. Oh, that would have that been I'd have to fly awful. back from Florida. Yeah. yeah. Missing Christmas. Florida. Uh, yeah. Last week. My summer home. I was gonna uh, <laughs> uh, the NPD thread on NeoGAF, we bet how many pages long it would be because we <laughs> oh, need some oh, yeah. pages. I lost this within minutes. <laughs> so uh, it was, yeah. 10,000 uh, pages. A strange thing happened because very early in the thread, good old crazy buttocks on a boat came in, on a train. Crazy buttocks on a train came in, uh, said, hey, uh, Sony or only lost by seven to 10,000 and everyone went nuts. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it was that close. And then the people who knew came in and said, no, it's not even close to that close. It's more like 400,000 uh, that the Xbox One won by. So, you know, crazy thread, record breaking thread. There are now 172 pages of that thread. I bet 250. Brandon bet 102. The winning bet is 102. It got real close, Brandon. You won. I'm in the lead. <laughs> oh wait, no, I wrapped up the year in in fourth place. No, you wrapped up the year, tied with me for third. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you both. Wow, years, a year is a long time. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is a long. That's a lot of points. So wow, everyone who's think. curious, that leaves Brandon with eight, wow. myself with eight, Damiani beats us with nine, Bloodworth of course had 12. Bloodworth seat anyway, yeah. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? I think I got him one of those points. I just imagine Bloodworth wherever he is, it's just like what? What's that? What's that yeah. feeling of accomplishment that just came over me? What? Power. Really yeah. Power. It just starts rubbing his belly. Yeah. Yummy. Um, yeah, Brandon, you were behind for so long. You had only had one point, and somehow you caught up to me. And honestly, if I had only won one bet the entire year, winning the last bet, I feel. Mm. Yeah. One hundred two. That was a good bet. I like the taste of that. That's really nice. Uh, so, <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, Brandon, you may now uh, plug any video and say goodbye. Uh, However, I mean, if I may make a suggestion. Yes. You already plugged something, and maybe Damiani has something to plug. So maybe no. you could give him a little Christmas pre- present, and maybe give him the plug. Do you want to plug something, Damiani? Well, we already talked about the PAX thing. We didn't, though. What is your panel? Oh, what are you doing at two PAX? Things. I thought we did on here. We didn't. You, you teased it, and I said, maybe if you well, win some bets, you can do it. And then you're oh, like, okay. okay. Um, so, PAX South is happening next month. Yes, still will be next month. We're at the end of December. January 22nd through 24th. I might have those dates wrong. It's like one of the last weekends. Uh, I'm going to be at PAX South, and I'm going to be doing a panel. Uh, I, it's the Saturday. I forget what day that is, whatever day that is, at 
8 or 8.30. Oh my gosh. Uh, you have no information about this? No, I do have the information. I still haven't memorized. I have it. <laughs> it's on, I have posted on my Twitter. Okay. It, I, I believe it's 8.30. It's 8.30 on Saturday. Uh, I have the theater Saturday name. in January? Which one? 20 something, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, Okay. 24th. I'm, I'm looking it up. So Kyle's helping us out real quick. So I got, oh my gosh, Saturday is going to be like the 31st. No, no, the week before. Oh, okay, so then that Saturday will be 24th. the 24th. Okay, so Saturday, January 24th at 8.30 p.m. There's going to be a pop fiction panel. Though come, We'll talk about anything you want there. I'm just going to show off a new thing for pop fiction there. What do you mean? What's the new thing? What are you showing off? So that's like the Hype second it. announcement. So the great folks over at, or I shouldn't call them folks, the, the staff over at Kingdom Hearts Insider who helped us with the Kingdom Hearts timeline. <laughs> Hold on, why can't we call them folks? <laughs> that sounds like so like old fashioned. It does, it does yeah. sound old fashioned. And they're like, they're like, I'm older than all of them, I think. So I don't think it's like weird to call, that sounds like older sounding. You're right, So you're it's a little right, weird. Yeah. Okay. So the, the staff there. The young scrappers. They, as Kyle said, they they helped out with the, the Kingdom Hearts timeline by helping me understand a lot of the confusing stuff. Uh -huh. So they wanted to do, uh, they, they felt that the, the timeline was very focused, but there's a lot of other mysteries and issues Insufficient. that that are too complicated or too convoluted to throw into something that's supposed to get the average person to understand the complex storyline of Kingdom Hearts. So we're doing that finally. It's going to happen in January. I believe there's going to be five episodes, but instead of putting them under timeline, we're going to put them under pop fiction because they're mysteries. We're, we're, we're explaining mysteries. Have you seen behind. pop fiction before? Yeah, so you're doing five episodes on Kingdom Hearts? They're short, so they're not full, so they're not gonna be like normal episodes of pop fiction where we test something out. Uh -huh. This is this is story based, but we're explaining like the mystery. And like, they're debuting at so, PAX. Well, one of them will. At least one will be there. The nice. first one, the script is now done. So turning that in actually the day before this goes up, which is Thursday, yeah, and hopefully we can get that into production soon. They're going to be about ten minutes long each, so they're not like hour-long masterpiece thing, majigs. Ten minutes long, and they talk about a key mystery. And the first one's going to be about how the hell time travel works in Kingdom Hearts, because the Dream Drop Distance, the main villain Xehanort, uh, there's time travel involved. You're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> like, even the timeline, we're like, yeah, he could travel through time. We didn't even bother to like go into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like at the that. time, I was just I like, like that what's you're going to get on? In there. I'm getting so, to the gritty. yeah, each of these complex subjects is getting a 10 minute video to explain how they work. And some of them won't have definitive answers because we won't know till Kingdom Hearts 3. So, we're starting off with the ones that we definitely know an answer to. Just me, might be a little bit difficult for the average person to like understand unless they got really into the lore and reading the materials and stuff. So, we're trying to make it as simple as possible for you to understand. So, Time travel, what's the mystery of time travel? How does it actually work? Does it, like, does it actually make sense to it? That'll be the first episode. And then we're gonna get to more complicated stuff that there isn't a definitive answer for yet, so it's gonna be like the inconclusive, because you know, there's no like, you know, actual answer. But we'll prep you for, hey, when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, you're gonna get that answer, you're gonna know what to be looking for, so you could, you could solve this mystery. Damiani, Brennan was very generous to grant you his plug, and then you rolled it out over the course of five minutes. Okay. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> you asked for it. But he's done. I, I, mean, asked he's for done. The, I asked for the PAX South plug. Like, hey. Ooh. Well, this ties in because we're showing off one of the videos. I don't know yeah. which one yet. Yeah. Whichever one is done closest to before I go is one I'll bring. I, I'm not okay with you bringing up Xehanort. Well, there's, oh, you're gonna love this because there's, there's young Xehanort, there's apprentice Xehanort, there's master Xehanort. The Xehanort who goes by a false name. Is there, oh, you know, you're talking about Ansem and yeah, Xemnas? Ansem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Xemnas. You know, the, the Heartless and the Nobody? Mm -hmm. I'm not okay with you talking about those on this show. <laughs> I'm not okay with knowing anything about any of these people. <laughs> it is cool that Ian knows way them. too much about these people. Ian edited Timeline? Yeah. So Ian, Ian's a, a pro on King of Hearts as well. <laughs> Okay, goodbye. This is the timeline couch, right? Well, here. Well, people kept yeah. asking for yeah. did you do some kind of pop fiction on the King of Hearts. I'm like, it's not really anything that there's no like real practical myths about Kingdom Hearts to test out. Yeah. The closest we did was the Pop Facts episode about the unused stuff. Yeah. And there's other unused stuff. So you can do that type of thing, but You could answer the, the greatest myth of all. Oh great, here it comes. Why? Yeah. <laughs> it was one crazy elevator ride. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the answer. Oh no no, that's not true actually. What? The whole elevator ride story is fiction. No. Oh, do an episode. 
No, it isn't. Yeah, it is. That was at the event what I went this? to. They specifically talked about that. They said that is fiction. They said electronic gaming. I can do this in 30 seconds. Kingdom Hearts came about because Disney and Disney of Japan and Square Enix or Square at the time Japan talked about trying to make an animated movie. In an elevator. It, no, 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 yes. no, no. They were they shared the same building, but it wasn't in an they elevator. They were feasibly in an elevator. They had a meeting, of, like an actual real meeting about doing a movie in the late 90s. But they could then, have had an elevator meeting about the meeting no. first. <laughs> Square then went to make the Square Pictures to make Spirits Within, it bombed. They're like, and then Disney went through some, Disney Japan went through staff changes. Mm -hmm. So be between the bomb and Square Enix, the animation doing terrible and like going ho horribly over budget like this might not be a good idea so then they said we still want to do something with you maybe we just make a game and then Nomura volunteered I'll have spearhead this project and it became Kingdom Hearts because he was in the back of the elevator oh he was not in the back of an elevator <laughs> he's like hey, Kingdom yeah. Hearts let me it see is, my drawings okay, okay we've checked the camera logs it's been confirmed that no member of Square Enix and no member of Disney ever talked to each other in an elevator ever about business <laughs> ever yeah. Uh, yeah if it was it was about their children talk, like, or their pets but the that idea of Final Fantasy and Disney characters being in some kind of collaborative thing starting in the late 90s about a movie project. That's where the idea came from. I heard in Kingdom Hearts 3, you actually go into that elevator. <laughs> <laughs> It's that's like where it is the whole time. That's the thing, like above. That's a, it's like the room uh, with all the chairs that the organization sits uh, in. The that's like in the middle. Room. That's the elevator. You know, it like comes up like oh, Bill and Ted's with that the, room with has the a phone name, booth. Apparently, it I does realize. actually go up. Like, that room has a name. Oh, no more yeah, steps out. Like, really? I didn't realize what it was till I was reading the script What's for this first episode. I forget. Get it while you can. It's like a phrase. The time is ticking away. It's seeping away. I know. Yeah. Man. Like when Roxas, when, like when Sora regained his memories and Roxas vanished into nothingness, he's I gone. Like, see, he's people he's know, seeping people away. People remember stuff. So I wanted to. See it was really emotional. The music. Yeah. Uh, it's really timeline's really good. I can't hear that. What is the the song? The main one that makes me want to cry. Dearly beloved. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> What's the song that makes me cry? That's what you should listen to, guys. That's my plug. The song that makes Ian cry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all I can think of like year. the J-pop songs. I don't know, like the. Oh. I don't like those. Ones. Way. They're Tata songs. The yeah. piano ones. The one on the piano. How's that there's one going? There's piano. No, there's 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 orchestral versions of them. What? How's Simple it? and clean and passion. Sing it. How does it go? Which one? Just give me a few notes. The one that makes you cry. Oh, I don't know. It's like the main one. The the one. Dun 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 dun. Yeah yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And yep, then yep, when yep. it like kicks in, goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know I, mean, I played like twenty. It's like a duet, first actually. So I, two pianos playing it. Yeah. I oh, wanted yeah. to end the show by giving Damiani ten minutes, but like we did, we we did that. There you go. I, I thought ahead of you. Here's another plug. Like he gets to do his year end review thing. Also, huh. like with Brandon, we're doing right. like one-on-one. Oh yes, oh, yeah, and that is like uh, the real, true game of the universe 2014 <laughs> awards. <laughs> Prepare yourself for trolling. That's By going to your country yeah. for 7.8. Okay, uh, <laughs> so Brandon, you can wrap it up. You, you won the bet. Uh, have our have our names been up here the whole time? Or, yes. Uh, no. That's on you. No. That's you can. They last as long as they last. Yeah. I'll put them up whenever. <laughs> um, so if they're up now or before or after, at some point, get uh, get M B M B Damiani. M B Damiani, right? Yep. At M B Damiani, get it while it's hot. Yeah. Because, while it's hot. Uh, you will not get any more reminders on GT time of what his uh, Twitter handle is. Uh, and Pop Fiction also has uh, any other any secret Twitter accounts you have that we should be aware of. Just the Pop Fiction one. That's Just in Pop the videos Fiction. though. Like we always put the, like the Facebook. But um, yeah, if you want to bug this guy about the fun stuff that he could do. Um, just, just, just Mike in general. You want, you know why he he's Damiani. That's why he can pull that off. That's why he can move to Texas. Daily Damiani, yeah. Because yeah. his he just has his damn shows hey. that he does that people like that he's good at. Daily it's just Damiani. like uh, need to go need to go to more events. You go to like Pack South. Who is we? What? GT. Oh, you absolutely. Branch out. Sure. Yes, and then next up is GT. We're so internal. GT East. GT right. East. That's, that's the dream. Yeah. I'll move get. to Boston. We'll all go to New York. We'll yep. set up an office in New York. That's what I'm pitching. Because our first, our first video out of the New York office Rock in 2015. Center. Yeah, we're gonna go. Yeah. We're gonna, gonna go we're to gonna, Nintendo, Nintendo World Store. Nintendo World Store. We're, 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 we're here from not yeah. Times Square. <laughs> That's it. There's 2014 for video games and game trailers. Doo -doo. Thank you guys so much for watching. Can you play the New Year's music um, now. And no. they, and I've, 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 yeah, I've said this like a billion times in videos, but just thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking with us uh, if you've been a longtime fan. It was a wacky transition year for this show, for all shows, Tell for GT as a whole. And uh, <laughs> if you're hearing me say this, that means you're sticking around and watching, and that means I love you and we love you. And uh, have a wonderful holiday and New Year.
I love. What? <laughs> <laughs>